without any further ado let me just go ahead and call our stage to the audience uh so madangi can we have you with us um well you already know my name my name is madangi i am a third year biomedical sciences student from chennai i scored a 324 in my grv 164 in my pond and 160 in my verbal i got a score of 4.0 on 6 in my analytical writing so 164 in gre quant and 160 in verbal a very very balanced score uh, so moving on yes. uh, guy uh, one more thing i want to ask you madangi is to understand what is your basic motivation behind pursuing a ms in us uh mainly i've been interested in research for like forever so that was my basic idea of why i wanted to pursue my ms in us because well i've been living in india my whole life so i just want to see what kind of experience i would get in that area when if i go to us or any other country uh, in the world all right all right so you want to go for more rnd opportunities that is what your dream is at the end of the yes. day uh, so what is that stream uh, would you would be specializing in i would like to specialize in molecular biology all right uh, which is kind of an up and coming field right now everyone who is in biology wants to be in molecular biology as far as i've heard so okay all right all right uh, so let us go ahead to the next question as such uh, what was your main plan do you have any plan after going to your masters what is that you have in mind after doing your masters mainly the only thing that i have to do is pursue my phd because in a biology field right now unless you have gotten a doctorate there is not much value uh, everyone has to pursue their uh, phd for to have any sort of standing or any good job or something like that so hopefully i am going i'll go on to pursue my phd this part the gre preparation is what most of the students are here for they want to know what all you did how all you pre prepared let us go one by one my first question is going to be very simple across so your overall gre preparation so when did you start thinking about gre how did you go about it and give us a rough timeline on how the process was uh well i started thinking about my jre pretty much as soon as i joined college because by then itself i had decided that i wanted to study abroad but i started preparing for my jre about uh, i think june of 2015 uh i knew my third year uh, the end of my third year was going to be really hectic so i wanted to start as soon as possible and i didn't want to take it into my fourth year so that's when i started and i i knew that i'm a procrastinator i knew that i wouldn't sit and work on my stuff as regularly as i should so i took the six month plan uh, offered by gre edge knowing that it would give me the space and the time to do other stuff because my college is quite college work is quite demanding and yeah so i did that for six months and i wrote my gre in february or oh, it's in february 2016 you wrote your gre that's yes. one month before all right so the quant preparation more specifically i've got a 164 in quant like how uh i think the main thing was that uh basically i was not daunted by quant that's one thing that i found in most people they just see gre quant and just those two words really scares them mm. so the thing i want to say right here is that the quant is the concepts are very simple i mean it's 8 standard 9 standard and standard math so it's the way that we apply the concepts that we've already learned that make a difference so i tried having not been really good at math i tried spending a lot more time at quant in the beginning but then uh, basically i tried looking at the same problem from different ways seeing that if i could solve it from a different aspect or something like that and i would focus on my specific problem area so with the feedback that i would get uh i would i would know that i was not doing so well in either data interpretation or my work problems and i would spend a little extra time on those things rather than the ones that i was doing pretty well at so i think that would be the main thing that i would that i would ascribe to my quant preparation all right all right <coughs> sorry about that so giving two different perspectives for the same problem kind of helped you master that right yes all right all right so now the most important part like yes scoring that is a big deal now 164 in quant is not a easy number right there's something yeah. special about it so how what was that one thing that you would say put you ahead in that terms of scores scoring schedule 
Um, I would sit and after every test that I took, I would sit and analyze which questions I was going wrong in. And I was able to identify and my SSAs also helped in uh, guiding me to identify those weak areas in that I was able to see that I was making a lot of mistakes in specific questions, in specific topics like for example data interpretation. Those large numbers would seriously scare me. I would see those large numbers and I would be, I would just, my mind would go blank. Mm. So I did a bit more of data interpretation which sort of helped me not be so scared of those questions. So I think that's the key, to not be scared of particular questions that you see in porn. Alright. So uh, to put it in a nutshell, one thing that was, could have been the additional competency is you're able to identify your own weaker areas now, is that right? Mm. Alright, so yes, how were you yes. able to do that one part, you're identifying your weaker areas, what was that you did to uh, that helped you identify these weaker areas as such? Um, basically, I realized that I was spending a lot of time on the data interpretation questions which was not giving me enough time to complete my tests. Uh, which was one thing and the other thing was even though I was spending a lot of time on those questions I was still not getting them right I was still going wrong in those questions so that's where I realized that, that those are the areas that I have to work on so can you share a little about how did you go about your verbal preparations um for my verbal I think I just uh, would study from the word list GRE word list and I would do my uh, practice sessions given by GRE Edge and I had a couple of other books I had uh, some other books that I studied from so I would do a lot of reading comprehension because uh, reading comprehension was again scary for me especially I get bored I kind of switch off when I'm reading uh, passages about topics that I'm not interested in so I try focusing on those in case I got them in my, my GRE exam so and basically I built up my vocabulary. I think that would be the crux of my verbal preparation. So building up your vocabulary is something, yes, definitely uh, every GRE aspirant should know. But uh, how to go about it is something that not a lot of people know, right? Uh, so can you share us, how did you go about your entire vocabulary building? From the, the way I, you talk is very clearly simple that you are quite very good with your vocabulary. So can you share a little on how did you go about building your vocabulary? Um, basically, I read from the word list, but then personally for me, it, it doesn't stay in my head if I'm just reading a, a word and reading its meaning and its antonyms, antonyms and things like that. So I realized that I needed to use the words myself in a sentence. So we, I would play games with my friends. We're all taking our GREs soon. So we all would get together and we would play games like Pictionary with words that we would take from the GRE word list or we would have... Uh, we would have a small pool kind of going on, we would pick five words and we would say that we have to slip it into normal conversation without the other person knowing. And we would give each other words, random words. I think one word that we actually got which actually wasn't in the GRE word list was something called Lala Palooza. I have no idea what it means still yet but I was supposed to slip that into a sentence. So yeah, so those were the kind of things that made it fun. Uh, and. And it really helped me in uh, remembering those difficult words. All right. One of the very common observations is that AWA is very crucial and students don't realize that. So what is your call on the overall AWA part and how did you go about the preparations? I think AWA is again very important because AWA is the thing that analyzes how you're able to look at a topic from various perspectives. Because whether you believe, it, believe in it or not, you need to be able to make your case there. And in a way, AWA also helped me with my RC because it helped me look at my RC also from different perspectives. When I was reading a sentence, I would able to I would able to come up with different points for that uh, particular sentence also. So, uh, and when I prepared for AWA again, I was a little cheeky here, but I love debates. So I would go and I would have a lot of debates uh, with my friends mm -hmm. and random topics, and we would have debates. So that really helped me in. Uh, making up uh, on-the-spot arguments or on-the-spot uh, points about a particular topic, even if I don't know much about the topic myself. All right, Th that is actually I had competence that developed in the school days, right? This uh, debating societies yeah. and all something. Yeah, I think that would have uh, played a good role. So Anshul says, "I hate AWA." Anshul, uh, you have to give your AWA respective of it is, and it's going to decide what kind of universities you get. Uh, so I think uh, you cannot afford to just hate AWA. I hope that helps. So. Uh, okay. So the next part, you mentioned about this very interesting fact of procrastination and the moment you mentioned that word, 
uh, there were questions popping up in my chat box. Ta -ta 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 -ta. How did you avoid procrastination? Uh, what was that one feature that helped you avoid this procrastination factor? Uh, I think it was a study plan that I got from GRE Edge because every time I would open my GRE Edge portal, I would see this huge list of overdue and just seeing that I would feel so bad and I would sit on the weekend, I, I would spend about four hours, five hours together to make up for not having done anything through the week. So okay. that's how I basically avoided procrastination and, and it was very comprehensive. Uh, I can see the question that I was supposed to talk about my study plan. So it was very comprehensive and there was a sort of, uh, what I found was there was a sort of flow that uh, went through. I mean, uh, from one topic to another, it was like the first topic would help me uh, work on my second and then my third and then my fourth. So that really helped uh, in understanding the quant uh, concepts. All right, all right. So that flow of uh, connectivity to the next topics kind of made the preparation easier. Yes. All right. So guys, uh, the most important tip for the day, if you want to avoid procrastination, get a study plan today. Trust me, that is one stop shop that you could avoid all your GRE worries. All right. Uh, so the next part is your, so all through your preparations, you one thing we were able to understand and the audience is very clear. Learning and practicing is something very important throughout your GRE preparations, right? So what is this, that is LNP. What is this feedback part? How crucial do you think this feedback part played in your preparations part? Oh, the feedback was one of the most important factors in my GRE preparation because one one thing one trick that I used for my GRE preparation was that I would focus more on the areas that I was not particularly good at. So, if uh, as a novice from my side sitting and uh, studying by myself, I wouldn't be able to identify those particular parts because I don't like going back and uh, rehashing my tests and uh, marking my exams. I hate that. So. The feedback that I got from my SFAs were really, really important because every time I would get a feedback, they would uh, they would talk about a lot of things, but there would be a few points that would be very common uh, from one feedback to another. So that really helped me in focusing on those areas. And I also was able, after they told me, I was able to identify that those were the questions that I was always going wrong in. Mm -hmm. So it is a very, very important component, yes. All its overall preparations kind of practice learning, practicing and feedback. Again, learning, practicing, feedback. That's the overall schedule. All right. Now, uh, you talked about SFAs. While we and you know about the SFA factor, a lot of the audience, they do not know what SFAs exactly are. Can you share a little on your SFA experience and what exactly SFAs are? Um, okay. Frankly, I think I should admit that I don't know what SFA stands for, but they're basically people who uh, were... <laughs> Kind of like person trainers who would analyze my test, analyze my answers and would tell me that these were the areas where I was going wrong and what was surprising for me was they were able to identify mistakes that I was making even though they weren't actually there when I was taking the test. It was like they were actually there. Uh, for example, uh, things like they were saying you were, I was focusing too much on a particular uh, question and that was probably because I was spending too much ca uh, time calculating the answer and I should you know, I should, uh, I should just find an approximate answer and that's how I should be answering the uh, questions and things like that. So they were quite precise and it was a really good uh, component that I had. All right, all right. Uh, so SFA exactly is uh, student facilitators, Madhangi. And Abhimanyu Sony has made a guess saying student friendly advisors. I think that's the overall <laughs> approach behind SFAs, to be honest. Uh, so that's pretty much about it. The most important part of today's seminar is right now. Your tips for the aspirants. We have a hell lot of aspirants that in this waiting to listen your advice. So what would you tell these guys to do right now? I think one major thing is to work on, work on your vocabulary because without your vocabulary, your verbal preparation is not going to be easy. And the second thing is when it comes to quant, uh, don't be scared about the questions. The questions may seem very difficult, but they're actually very easy. At the crux of it, they're very simple. I remember spending about half an hour on a question and then I would find out that I could actually have finished it in 10 seconds. So it's all about how you're able to think uh, with your GRE quant and how you're able to analyze the question in different ways. So I wouldn't suggest that you do that on the day of your GRE exam, but when you're preparing uh, for the for your GRE quant to 
see if there are other ways in which you can solve it see if there are better ways in which you can solve a particular question which would probably help the third thing would be that you should look at your weaker areas because the strong areas you're already good at so it's the weaker areas where you would lose a lot of time and uh, you would lose a lot of marks so so spend a lot more time or identify those weak areas even if it takes a little bit extra time i think uh, you should identify those areas where you're not good at and focus a little bit extra on them i hope you had a wonderful time today we all did it was a very interactive some of the fantastic audience today so thank you so much for joining guys you can follow my upcoming webinars in bit.ly/gri webinars if you want to contact me you have the number on the screen right now 9884532276 until i see you in the upcoming webinars this is vishnu signing off a very good evening and take care guys